All right, so let's just jump right in. Goal of today is going to be to quickly set up a developer portfolio using Plasmic as the visual page builder. We'll go through a couple of its features. We just wanna really just get started with it, that's it. And then we'll go dive in later in a later video. All right, so first thing you wanna do is actually log in to Plasmic. Once you're logged in, you'll see something like this. You'll obviously have less projects than I do, but what we'll wanna do right now is go to new project. Here, we'll wanna pick through our website templates and we're gonna start with a template, but you can obviously start with a blank project, mobile first, whatever you want. We'll start with this minimal, minimalist about me page just to show you some of the basic features of Plasmic as well as, you know, if you want to actually create this developer portfolio real quick, you'll know how to do it. So with that, we have kind of a really basic, obviously web page, both in mobile and in desktop view. So we, we have, we see both of the views right off the bat, right in our workspace. So that's a really big advantage uh, to using something like Plasmic for developing. This is all ready to go code wise, right? We can deploy it later and we will. Uh, and we'll see what it looks like live on the internet. But for now, we're in this kind of Figma-based or Figma-like builder, I like to call it. It's really similar to something you would see in Figma for design. And uh, it has some of the very similar functionality as well as an import from Figma function, which we'll talk about in a future video as well. But for now, what I wanna do is just do some basic edits, show you how those are done. You can see on the left-hand side that there is a trace of where I'm actually hovering over what element I'm actually hovering over. So that helps us a lot with what we're actually editing. You can see this vertical stacks, horizontal stacks. Those are just basic component level uh, stuff. There's nothing custom there. If we go into, let's say, Anna Wu, let's change this name. It's as easy as double clicking it and typing in my name, Mike Brown. Perfect, that's easy to go. Uh, let's change the email as well. That's an easy one. Okay run at gmail.com if you guys want to contact me you can i am free on that email and as you can see when we change it everything kind of live updates as well in our mobile view which is fun to see uh, now obviously this is really basic we want to also add a section for showing off your projects so that's what we're going to be doing kind of a little bit custom in this in this case uh, just to show you how you, we can actually create a component while we are in this visual page builder that can be reusable in the future, even if it, you wanna use it on a different project. Okay, so let's create a component and we'll do that by clicking the home page and then new, new component. We'll call this a uh, project card and we'll create the component. It gives us a really basic layout. We don't really have to worry about that right now. We can kind of change it a little bit, uh, but for now that should be fine. And with that, we can start creating the component. So what is this component gonna need? All we have right now is a vertical stack, obviously, that's not gonna be enough. We're gonna want to have an image. So let's put the image in that vertical stack. Then in that same vertical stack, so vertical up and down, right? We also wanna have some text, uh, maybe a title for the component. So that's right up here. We'll add some text here. And as well, again, we're gonna add another set of text where we can maybe put some bullet points about what the project is about, maybe the technology stack you're using or whatever. So essentially two text inputs as well. We also want to be able to click on the component and take us to the website or the project that uh, it's referencing. So with that, this is an easy one. You can right click this vertical stack and, sorry, you can right click this vertical stack and you can convert to a link. So now you can see that the vertical stack has been changed to a link. Uh, it still has the same functionality, but it has a link around it now, which we can fill in later on with the destination, right? And even open in a new tab. So for now, let's make this text a little bit more readable. It's for some reason default to that, I'm guessing because of the defaults of this project, the template that we cloned. So now we have a little bit more visibility on the text and maybe let's upload an image as well. For that, we're gonna use just the regular HTML of Things website. Uh, let's take a quick screen grab. Easy peasy. And we can go here and paste that screen grab. Boom, so we have an image here. We have some text, so let's add some text. 
uh, HTML all the things, right? And then on this side, we want to actually create some bullets. So I just did a dash enter, so that will create a bullet for us. And we want to say something like HTML all the things is a podcast slash blog website that posts the latest podcasts and blogs from the HTML all the things team. And then maybe on the next point, we'll point this was built using Webflow because that's what it was built in. So you can see here, we have some basic scaffolding information. We probably want to prettify this a little bit, right? Because this doesn't look that great. So I think the first thing is we probably want to limit the size of this image. Uh, and to do that, we're actually going to turn that image, wrap it in a container. Uh, we'll just do a horizontal stack container. So that gives us a little bit more control over that image. And on that horizontal stack, we can go into this right sidebar again, very similar to what you would see in Figma. And we can kind of give it a height value or a width value. So we'll, we'll give it a height value now, maybe 300 PX, or maybe that's a little bit too big. We can give it a uh, 250 pixel height just to kind of limit it a little bit. Uh, we might also want to limit the width a tiny bit, maybe 40%. Now ah, that's too, obviously too small, but we'll, we'll limit it to about 80%. Yeah, something like that is fine. Uh, for now, uh, we'll probably limit, we might wanna actually come do the same thing with our text, wrap it in a container, let's wrap it in a horizontal stack and do a max width of 80% just to get them all lined up, oops. So we can see here, we just did a, we wanna put HTML things actually inside this horizontal stack. Let me see if I can just do that real quick. There we go. Easy peasy, and maybe actually, we, you know what? We'll convert this to a vertical stack because I just realized horizontal stack isn't what we want here. We want it to be up and down. So we accidentally put it into a horizontal stack. We can actually quickly convert that to a vertical stack just by going like this. And now we have all of it wrapped in a container. Uh, we want to maybe, you know, this card might be a little bit bigger than what we have in this viewport. So let's extend the viewport and I think now what we want to do actually is uh, create a background color and maybe some rounded corners just to make this t card stand out a little bit more. So for the background color, what we'll want to do, let's see here, we're in a link container, backgrounds right here. Let's add a background color. I'm just going to do white for now. We'll add a white background color and with that white background color, we're also going to do some rounded corners. Corner radius, we'll do something like 30. Give it a nice round and then let's do some shadow as well. Some basic shadow. So it gives us kind of a basic shadow. That's gonna be enough for us for now. We probably also wanna do some top and bottom padding, I would say on this whole container. So let's do that as well, just to round out the design. Obviously, again, I say this in a lot of videos, but I am not a designer uh, and that shows up evidently, but we can do a little bit of fine tuning here. That's looking pretty good, I would say, uh, or it's looking enough to be at least recognizable. Now, we've created this component. It's all looking good. Let's see what it actually looks like in our home, on our homepage, right? Let's go to our homepage. Here, again, we don't have it anywhere here, but what we can do is in this vertical stack, which is here, we can add another component. We'll add a responsive column stack here. And for the first responsive column here, we're also going to add our component. And we can do that on the left hand side here. We're going to search for uh, project card and you can see it pops up. Boom. And we can do the same thing on this right hand column. We can do project card. Boom. And we can see it pop up. And again, we can see it pop up on the right on the tablet and mobile view. And we can see it pop up on the actual uh, home page view as well, the full screen. Now, obviously there's some issues here. We don't want redundant content. And if this was a real reusable component, we should be able to pop them in and then change the content. Right now we can't actually do that because the component is taken as a full component one-to-one. -one. What we need to do is we need to go back to our component and we'll do that right now, project card. And we need to convert our dynamic 
elements, the image and the text, to slots. And slots are a way to make it so that we can make reusable components with dynamic content. So again, we're gonna, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna select the image, something that we wanna create dynamic. We're gonna right click it and we're gonna convert it to a slot target. Boom, that's all we have to do. Same thing we're gonna do with this text, right click, convert to slot target, and same thing we're gonna do with all of this text right here, the whole UL. Right click this text element right here that holds the UL and we're gonna convert that to a slot target as well. So we've converted the title here and the bullet points to slot targets as well as the image. So that means that when we go back to our homepage, we should now be able to change them. Now these are gonna be still held as default values, uh, which is great for us to at least scaffold stuff out when we have to do multiple of the same component like a card, but we will be able to actually change all the values that we need to now from our homepage. So if we go back now, to our homepage, we can see that we're, it's now all selectable. All the elements that we want to change are selectable. So let's change the first thing, which would be the image. So we don't want, we want to replace this image with another one. Now we'll replace it with another project that I've worked on. Solarians.click, easy peasy, boom. We'll go back here, replace image. We'll wait for it to upload. And bam, you can see that it was replaced. It only affected this card, not the default values of this card. And now we can do the same thing with the text. Solarians. And we'll, you know what, before we do that, let's zoom in a little bit here. The text. Okay. Solarians. Enter. Nope, we don't want to enter. We don't want to put spaces. And we'll change this value as well to Solarians is a NFT website for the Solarians, Solarians project. And it was built using some of my favorite technologies, Svelte Kit plus Solana Web3 libraries. Boom. That's all we really need to put for this one. And we can see that we have now two cards. Now there's a few things we could adjust here. As you can see, one card is bigger than the other. Let's actually set a height value to these cards so that they maintain the same height. That can, again, be done from the project card. We go back to the project card. We can select the link component, which is the thing that's the container of everything. And for this, we can add a height. Instead of hug content, let's make a height of, I don't know, 300 PX, too small. Let's make a height of 450 PX. That's about right. It's a little bit big, but it's fine. Uh, and we can go back again. Anything that we change here should immediately affect our car, our homepage as well. So we can see that now our heights are the same. The thing that could be an issue is that we have a mobile version of this. Now it looks okay right now, but maybe we want to change something up in the mobile version. So what we can do is let's say we want to have a, I don't know, larger size on a larger size heading on desktop and a smaller size heading on mobile. Let's go do that right now. We'll go to the project card again. Now we don't have any mobile variants here, but we can easily add one, add a variance, add screen variant. We'll do mobile only. And on mobile, we really only want a different height, a different uh, size of this text. So first let's set the size that we actually want as default on desktop. That can be done from here. We have 14, let's set it to 22 pixels right here. And we can see it changes across all variants, but if we want to only change it on mobile, let's say we want on mobile, we want this to stay at 14 PX, we change that and it is not affected on the actual variant. So if we do a bold here or a weight bold, right? It's affected across all. And we can again go here and maybe we want this to be semi bold, something like that on mobile. This is all customizable. You can do whatever you want, but the point is we can differentiate between base variant, which applies to everything and mobile and desktop, de um, any, any real breakpoint variant that you want to set. So you can set multiple different breakpoints. It doesn't have to be tablet or smaller. There's a way to do that. Now, I think the last thing that we need to do is to deploy this. 
and that can be easily done again through the visual page builder. We'll go back here. We can see that, okay, we like this site. Again, I'm not a designer. We're just going through the features right now and we wanna publish it. Let's publish. So we can see here we have a publish menu. We have multiple different ways to publish, but for now, let's just publish using Plasmic Hosting because we have our own hosting built in. Publish during Plasmic Hosting, publish a website with the Plasmic Hosting, sure, configure. Uh, what do we want our subdomain to be? We'll call this Mike Karan uh, Portfolio. Save the subdomain. And this is all, again, built into Plasmic and free, in fact, for now. Uh, we want to show the Made in Plasma badge. Why not? Sure, but we can turn that off. And then all we have to do is hit publish. And it'll take us through the whole process right now of publishing this site. So it's saving a new version. It'll publish the CDN cache and it'll be good to go for us to view on the, on the web. And we'll take a look at that in a second once it's done publishing. Okay, so it's done publishing. We can actually take a look at the website now. Let's throw it in and see what happens. Boom. The site is up. So obviously on a really large screen, we'd probably have to do a little bit of adjusting, but it's looking okay, I think. Uh, everything's made in plasmic, that's cool. Now, the only thing we haven't done yet, actually, is link these to something. Remember, we add that link component, we haven't actually done that. Well, let's take a look at how to do that right now. So one mistake I made was I created a link component as the container, and I forgot to realize that the link component with other slots inside of it can't be converted to a slot. So we would have to only choose one link for both of them, which is obviously not what we want. But there is a solution to this that's not very difficult. What we can do here is we have this project card. We can actually surround that in a link component. So for now, we can just click convert to link, boom. And you can see that the project card has been surrounded in a link component. It's actually a very easy fix for this. And the first one obviously needs to be linked to HTML of things, done. And the second one needs to be linked to Solarians. And we'll do the same thing again. Right click here, convert to link, easy peasy. Click on the link here, done. So now we can go back here, we can check the link. We can see that it's HTML of things here. And we can check the link here and we can see that it's Solarians here. So one thing we forgot to do was we forgot to remove the link from this component. So it might confuse it when we have two links nested in each other. So what we wanna do here is we wanna remove that link. First of all, we need to copy the styles of this link since we're going to ungroup it slash remove it. So let's copy the styles. Then let's wrap this in a container, a vertical stack, ungroup it, and paste the styles into that container. So we can see that it's not perfect, so we'll have to do a little bit of editing here. So now with the link removed, we can go back and take a look at our homepage, make sure that everything is looking correct, it is. Now we only have, should have one link, the link here. Let's check to make sure our links are correct, which it looks like they are. Let's check here, link. Looks like the link is correct. Maybe let's actually open it in a new tab as something that we've changed in this round. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Link, boom, changed it. Open it in a new tab. Now we wanna start over, wait for it to compute the changes. Did that, fixed links, let's publish. And now that is published, we can go back to our page, refresh, and we can see here that it's actually gonna open us up in the right links. Boom. That's it. So we have a semi-functional page here. Now, obviously, we could add our correct links into here, but for now, these are just default values. You can change the background color. You can change the entire design, all you want to do on your own. Thank you for listening, and stay tuned for way more content.